You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. We are gathered here as advisors, as scientists. The kind of place we expect a ghost to like to wander around. Hey, we all know that we're going to die, baby. I'll help you. I'm something of a witch. Welcome to Mission Spooky. I'm your fantastic host, JC. With me today is the pretty okay, standardly mediocre Kiki. What's up, Spooksters? So the weather in North Carolina, been pretty nice. A little bit rainy, but um, last day was about 67 degrees. Can't really complain. So how was it going? Pretty good. Still still recovering from, from the flu thing. Uh, it's almost as though we're recording this directly after recording Hellier Review 2. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like I've had zero time from the last episode to, to heal. But here we are recording because somebody has to go on vacation. So we have to do multiple recordings in one session. So in the last episode, I mentioned Alistair Crowley. And I forgot to send you guys to another podcast if you want to know more about Crowley. It's one that I highly recommend, and that would be episode 55 of Last Podcast on the Left, who honestly, if I hadn't listened to them, I probably would not be doing this right now. So go listen to them. I mean, uh, listen to us first and, and then go binge all of like what, over 300 episodes now? Closing in on four. Yeah, it's your fault that I'm listening to them. My fault. Oh, you should listen to this podcast. You're all this is weird shit. Why don't you listen to this podcast? And then I did, and now I'm back into this weird shit and doing this. So, hey, thanks. You're welcome, world. I created Mission Spooky. You you did, yeah. Sure. You did. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You came to me and said, hey, whatever. And I was like, hey, we should do a podcast, because I like doing this shit. Yes, I planted the idea in your mind. But before... That was, you should listen to all of last podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Religiously. It was ridiculous. I, I, I was in, like, the house with the earbuds in, like, all of the time. I kind of went nuts, and I, yeah, I did it. I listened to the whole thing. It was great. But, you know, Marcus Parks, my spirit animal, when it comes to research. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Go, Marcus. Yay. So if you guys follow us on Instagram, then you probably know by now that I'm a huge foodie and someone who used to work in the restaurant industry. And so I can't visit Greensboro and not tell you guys the best places to eat. So um, number one, Alex's Cheesecakes in downtown Greensboro. Absolutely wonderful. And I used to cook at another location that was very close to Alex. And one day he came over and tasted my cheesecake, which was called Jack's Cheesecake. I named it after my best friend, Jack, who actually designed it for. And Alex paid me probably the best compliment ever as a chef, which was, hey, your cheesecake is really good, like almost as good as mine. Well, I think it's better than his, but whatever. Shh, don't tell him. Anyway, um, awesome place to go downtown. And then uh, definitely mentioned Sticks and Stones, which I talked to you guys about on Instagram and showed you some awesome pictures of their pizza. Marvelous clay oven pizza, just the absolute bomb. And they always have a really good beer selection as well. And then lastly, we always eat at Delicious for baked goods. And since we kind of spoil little man, um, his birthday's in January and it's so close to Christmas that we always have two birthdays for him because you know why not he's my one and only and so he gets uh two birthday cakes and he gets one from delicious every year since he's been born and well i should say every year he's been born and able to eat solid food he's gotten a special cake from delicious so i highly recommend them and they're over on lawndale drive sounds like fun if you don't bring me back a cheesecake i quit i just literally told you that the cheesecake that i make is as good as alex's if not better. So you make a cheesecake, you bring me one of Alex's, and I will test it. All right. 
I get two cheesecakes. Yeah, once again, it's a plan that has no downside for you. Yeah, no, that's how I live my whatsoever. life. Always, always going up. up. All right. So we don't have that much to talk about beforehand. I'm technically not here. Just my ghost. Uh-huh. JC is barely here because he's still sick. And uh-huh. so we're going to break for sponsor now. And when we get back, we're going to talk to you about the Cave of Kelpius, your uh, listener's choice, peculiar Pennsylvania episode that you guys voted on. I just want to make it very clear that you guys voted on this one because um, in the words of one of the best movies ever created, you guys chose poorly. Nice. All right. Cave of Kelpius. I was calling it Klepius by accident. Oh, by the way, this is our pivotal show, number 13. Yeah. My personal lucky number. 31 backwards. I don't believe in a uh, lucky number. Oh, whatever. That's unfortunate, because you're not living your best life if you don't have a lucky number. Uh, false. I'm living my best nut life with every number being the same to me. So the Cape of Calpius sounded like it was going to be so much more interesting than it actually is. This is the death cult one, right? I mean, I did loads of research. I obviously know what this cave is already, guys. So here's where they get you. They're like, this is a death cult. You should totally do the Cave of Kelpius, making it sound all like super sexy. Like, yeah, I want to do death cult. Hell yeah. And then you find out it's uh, really not sexy at all. Oh, JC, you did your homework. Why don't you tell us about the Cave of Kelpius? Well, it's definitely, um, it's definitely a cave where people have gone and it's not um it's not a sexy cave i'll tell you that right now i would not have intercourse with this cave um that is that is you know and i think that's all we really need to know from jc right now jc did the important research would he you know have sex with it or not a cave and no, he wouldn't. He would not. Okay, guys, it can, it's only going to get worse from here. So, what are the rumors of of this cave? Like, what is the story? All right, so here's the tea, guys. There was this man named Johannes Kelpius, and he led a band of European separatists to the banks of the Wissahickon in uh, what is now Philadelphia's Fairmont Park. He comes here to Pennsylvania in 1694, and he actually came at the invite of William Penn because these guys were seeking religious freedom and they were coming up on the millennium for them, which would have been 1700. And so they were basically believing that the world was going to come to an end in 1700. And and this is something that I always say about these quote unquote death cults is that it's always the world is coming to an end at the turn of a century. You know, it, 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 look what happened when we, we did, 2000 when it was you know 1999 and oh my god the computers aren't going to understand anything and we're going to lose our, all our information so it, it's it goes back even further than this but this group was thinking that 1700 was going to be the end of the end of days a little bit different uh though than most quote-unquote death cults in that they they weren't as bad as like others they they just wanted to live out the rest of their lives in peace and quiet and not be bothered and so they kind of set up a little commune and um it's amazing they didn't rape anybody that i could find they didn't kill anybody that i could find (laughs) they basically just set up on the wissahickon river and and kept to themselves i'm very interested in this death cult yeah because they actually weren't like a bunch of buttholes yeah yeah Yeah. and they just wanted to be left in peace and quiet which is my ultimate dream so here's what they did they made a large meeting house Okay. They studied astronomy. They Nerds. S- they started a botanical garden and an orchard. And they actually taught children in the community about those things. And they offered prayer, healing, and um, they wrote poetry and music. So, yeah, this really is not that bad of a thing. Yeah, they sound like they were good for the community and they tried to make the world a little bit better place before they thought it was going to blow up. Wait, how did they think the world was going to end? Why, I'm so glad that you asked that question. Uh, So they called themselves the Hermits of the Wissahickon, 
or mostly better known as the Society of the Woman of the Wilderness, which in and of itself is so typical of anything. This group was completely male based, but they called themselves the Society of w- of the Woman in the Wilderness, but apparently women were not invited. So there you go. That's because women probably looked at this and were like, guys, you're just being dumb. Yeah, you guys are being idiots. It's only going to be 1700, man. Don't worry about it. So the the latter, by the way, this society of the woman of the wilderness is a reference to a passage in Revelation in which a woman flees to the wilderness seeking refuge from the end of the world. So <laughs> following the example, ex- except the fact that they were all monks and they were all men, <laughs> They establish themselves in, in the Wissahickon Woods, and um, it's actually an area even to, today, it's called Hermit's Glen, and this is the reason why it's called that. And then the nearby road is Hermit Lane. So, yeah. It's about 40 of them, 40 monks all together. So, the, to answer the question, then, they were looking at revelations, okay. and they were thinking that they were seeing the signs of the end of times, and and. This is why Revelations needs to not be taken so goddamn seriously because it isn't, <laughs> it's not what you think it is. It's it's literally like the end of times for them at the time that they wrote it because they were concerned that people were going to go back to the old way of life. And it was talking about Roman occupation and being careful not to get caught up in the Roman gods and goddesses that these bad things could happen to you or the, the end of your world would happen if you did. It's literally not to be taken seriously. It's never, ever going to be an actual end of the world thing. And that's me speaking from my Catholic background. I would love if the Romans could take over the world again. So Kelpius was actually Philadelphia's first mystical guru. And guess where he was born? Um, Sweden. No. You get three guesses. Oh, okay. Uh, France. No. Um, England. <laughs> no. <laughs> he was born in Transylvania. Ooh. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Was he a vampire? No. Sadly, no. Uh, he was 26 year old. When, or, bleh, he was 26 years old when he formed the society. Oh my God! At 26, I couldn't. Uh, uh, fuck that. Yeah, can you imagine being 26 and like forming a society? <laughs> you know, our mine would have looked a lot different. <laughs> our generations, we're so lazy. When I was 26 years old, I was just, you know, I was just living my life, enjoying my life, working at a place. Doing my best. This guy's off starting societies for the end of the time. For the end times, you know. Good on him. Good on him. So you're 26 years old, and you get invited to come to the new world. And the only way to get there is to sail. So you're just typical time. If you're going from England, it was 25 to 30 days on a ship. So it takes you almost a month just to get here. And then you get here and then you have to form your a whole society because you have nothing. You have to build all of it. You have mm. to build your house, your housing, you have to build, you know, it, it's kind of crazy to yeah. think about, you know? Yeah. And having the skill sets necessary. Well, luckily, even do that. luckily at that point, they didn't have like, you know, inspectors coming around being like, well, you know, your outlets are two foot off the uh, floor, and they're supposed to be three foot, so we're going to have to tell you to restart building. Uh, oh, and yeah, we did just put that rule into effect last week, so... Mm. Um, yeah, I used to work construction, guys, uh, so I understand the pains. But if you could just go into the woods and build a house, it's not that difficult. Just fell a couple... I mean, it's difficult. It is. But it's, you know, you can do it. You moved here, you built, you had to build all your own stuff. And supposedly they're using the cave to store books and scientific equipment. Okay. There's a little bit of a conjecture about whether the cave is a real cave or if it's just a spring house. We'll get to that uh, a little bit later here. After I tell you guys more about the death cult. (laughs) That sounds more like just a bunch of hippies, really. Yeah, 
that's what it's sounding like. <laughs> that's oh, goodness. Okay, so when the end of the world didn't come as planned, right, Kelpius and his monks decide they're just going to stay there and continue to create art and music and study astronomy and help the community. They didn't disband until after Kelpius' death in 1708. So that's kind of neat, you know. One of the later members of the society, Christopher Witt, painted the first oil painting in America with Kelpius as his subject. Oh. And that painting is currently housed at the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. Nice. If you want to go see it. No, I'm good. No, I mean, like, if our listeners want to go see it. Nah, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> So until the 1940s, the structure, currently called Cave of Kelpius, had a fireplace and chimney that was removed uh, through vandalism because so, people are buttholes. True. It does hint at having been more than a spring house because of that. So the true identity of this cave has been debated for many years. It's marked today by a granite monolith placed outside the entrance uh, in 1961. And... The guys who did that were actually the Rosicrucians, which in itself is a mystical brotherhood that claims to have secret wisdom dating back to ancient Egypt. And they consider Kelpius to be the original American Rosicrucian. That could be a whole separate episode. Rosicrucians could be like a whole separate crazy cult type thing. I don't know if I want to get into cults on Mission Spooky unless they actually are part of Pennsylvania in this case. Well, I guess we could because they're claiming that Kelpius is the first American Rosicrucian. Yeah. But uh, you'll find this in the 1,800-acre section of the Wissahickon Valley Park, which is part of Fairmont Park, which I'm going to tell you guys is enormous. And, um, yeah, it's enormous. And that's what she said. <laughs> Fairmont Park, and people don't realize this it is 9200 acres and includes 63 parks altogether it's five times larger than new york city's central park wow yeah you could put five central parks inside our fairmont park in philadelphia nice it's crazy uh i think i've mentioned it before it's also where a lot of dead bodies used to pop up because it's so large <laughs> there's parts of it that are still very wooded and uh, i always tell people stay on the trails don't don't wander off too much. Yeah. It's not as quite as murdery as it used to be, but... It, and, and honestly, it's not that people were getting murdered in Fairmont Park. You know, they'd be killed elsewhere and then dumping the bodies in Fairmont Park, so... See, so, I think we talked about this in one of our early episodes. I feel the key is to get your victim to where you plan to dump the body while the victim's still alive. Because then you don't have to worry about, like, lugging them around. You have to, hey, you want to go for a walk in in a park? Yeah, we'll just go for a walk, man. It's nothing big. Just have some conversations. And then that's when you murder them. Five, oh, wow, this is a weird six-foot deep hole you got here. Yeah, real weird. So we're, we're back to death, even though... We're talking about death cult, and it seems like it's a bunch of hippies. So, yeah, I'm going to put some fucking death into this. Um, via jokes. So we went from being, this was being a wholesome, partially wholesome. I came into this expecting to talk about a death cult. I know, I'm really sorry that it's not like that. It, you should be. This That's is why I part. said they chose poorly, apparently, on this one. On this one, you guys chose poorly because it really isn't as creepy spooky as um we were kind of hoping it would be. But we're still doing it because you guys voted on it, so... And we no. give you guys what you want. Exactly. That's what Except we're here for. for naked pictures of me. Please stop asking for that. <laughs> I'm not Dear doing God, it. please, please stop asking Unless for pictures Unless you join the of it. $200 Patreon tier. That we don't even have up yet. But we will. And then I'll send you, after but a no. year, after a year in that Patreon, it's here. I will send you one picture of me naked. God, no, because then we'd have to change our Patreon account to adults again. And we know what happened last time. It was a total mistake. That time it was a mistake. So, well, you know. Yeah. We do what we got to do. That's what I say. <laughs> so in 
So there's actually a um, Kelpius Society. You can go around to, today. Yes, but it's not what. Hold on, it's not as cool. Well, I think it's cool as a, from a historical perspective. Okay. Oh, it's boring. Right, and here we go. So you can go to kelpius.org, K-E-L-P-I-U-S dot org, and you can give donations for this. I think it's actually kind of cool. Um, the Kelpius Marker Committee started arranging for the establishment of historical markers at the site through the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission. You can visit um, this .org site, and it's going to tell you more about um, giving donations if you'd like to. You can join the Kelpius Society, so, you know, I'm totally fucking doing it, okay, because I want to be a member of the Kelpius Society. Uh, future activities then include research, publication, site development, uh, restoration of the garden and the orchard, archaeology, and more. And I think that um, they currently do, yep, they do, they do tours of Hermit's Glen, and you can meet at the Kelpius Community Marker on Hermit Lane between Barnes Street and Henry Avenue. And it's about an hour and 40 minute tour. Let's bring good shoes for hiking. And again, if you go to the kelpius.org site, you can sign up for this to, to arrange a tour. And then your tour is going to be the Kelpius Cave, the Hermitage Mansion, Lauriston Cottage Site, uh, the Henry Avenue Bridge, Ridge of the Wissahickon, and, and Lover's Leap, which ooh, we might get. Mm-hmm. You know what? Maybe we should talk about that at some point too this is where it branches off see we we learn about one thing and then branches off into other subjects that we can talk about so you know anyway oh poor cave of kelpius you're just so boring i don't know what to do for you you poor baby oh and i'll put some um photographs up too and maybe even map it out for you guys that want to go visit because you can go you can totally go see this whenever you want to yeah, it's a uh, public park land, so just obey the rules of the park. Now, are there any, like, hauntings reported here or anything? Nothing? No, no, this was just one of those, like, peculiar PA okay. ones. Like, it's just a really cool place to go visit, especially in the summertime, um, even, well, springtime, even in the fall, because you're, you've got all the fall vegetation, you know, turning colors. It's, that might be a really neat place to go to. Johannes Kelpius was a pretty smart dude. By 22, he had a master's degree in theology and had already published several works and began this, um, I'd say it's a cult because it's really not, it's more like a group of people. (laughs) But they were all drawn to pietism, which is that whole monks thing, which we will get into briefly when we talk about the Goblin of Easton, because there were monks involved in that story. Can't wait. Uh huh. That's, That's coming another, up in another week. You know, we're just giving you guys a lot of fun-filled episodes this month, where we're not <laughs> completely debunking them and being like, "Wow, this is the worst thing I've ever talked about." I in did. My life. I did not. Okay, listen. Did not debunk Grand Park. Grand Park is what it is. It that place is haunted, and I intend on going there and doing some of my own investigation. All right, guys, so I got nothing else on uh, on Johannes Kelpius besides him being just a really nice guy who um, just wanted to live his life as a monk on a, along a river. And, um, yeah, nothing spooky goes on there, nothing. This is going to be a really, really short episode. Yeah, well, you know. The research was done. <laughs> Uh, I would say we did an equivalent amount of research. I would say we both came to this with a lot of knowledge about the subject. Um, And we're both, you know, much wiser for this. And our listeners are going to be the wisest of people because they're listening to our wisdom. I will tell you something. I got a really awesome compliment from someone that both of us know in real life. I'm not going to mention her name just because I don't know if she wants her name mentioned or not, but we both know who she is. She said, you know what? I started listening to your podcast and I'm learning so much about the area, about certain things I didn't, I didn't know about. And I love it because she's loving the history 
and the historical stuff and the learning about the people and and then also about the ghost stories so so there you, that that was like the best compliment that i could have possibly gotten it was really sweet the best compliment i could have got is any i give myself no one can top me at giving me compliments I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> so it's, it's true. I'm not, I can't refute it, actually. I mean. No, no, no one can beat me. So another aside that sort of has something to do with that compliment um, reminds me of uh, something from the Ghost Story Guys that I was listening to that cracked me up. I think I'm on episode 20. I really enjoy them. I think it was Brennan who was like, don't go around asking people to listen to your podcast because it's like. It's like one of the single most terrible things that you can be like, have you listened to my podcast yet? Have you listened to my podcast yet? Um, I am that person though. <laughs> like, to our Same. friends. To our friends, I know. Same. I'm like, I'm like a little car salesman. I'm like, hey, hey, do you listen? Have you listened to the podcast yet? Because you know, you said that you would. Have you done it yet? Yeah. Okay. That's what. Here's the link. I'm going to send it to you right now. You need to listen to it now. My mom says she can't listen to us because we're not on any of her radio channels. <laughs> I'm going to put my mom on blast right now. I love you, mom. <laughs> that, that's how I put my mom on blast because my mom's the best. I'll, I'll die, die on this hill. This. There's not a force in this world that can make my mom do anything she doesn't want to do. <laughs> that's what I'll say. I would say same, except that all three of us, girls especially, are really good at guilting her into doing things for us. So I would never guilt yeah. my mom into doing anything, except all the time. <laughs> and I say that because it's she guilts us into things all the time. Oh, my God. She's really good. She's like the master guilt tripper. Yeah. I have a passport and everything like because of her. It's great. And I don't mean a literal passport. I mean a, a guilt trip passport. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, like a trip. Okay. Yeah, that was a bad joke. That was a really bad joke, guys. Not really bad. I'm back on my uh, migraine medication, which is making me like super crazy right now. I love it. But hey, I'm not in any pain. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Okay, so anyway, we're going to take a short break for our musical guest. Hailing from FBI's most dangerous city in Illinois. This is Rob Wissenhunt, and the song, much like this episode, is called Trainwreck from his 2019 album, The Variable. When we come back, spooky squad news and shout out. Thank you so much for listening today. I'm going to do my shout out first, which is to this time another podcast. They are called Grief Burrito. Haz and Jordan are freaking hysterical. And if you're looking for a gaming podcast, with also pop culture and a bit of paranormal thrown into it. It is funny as hell and really informative. I loved their end of year roundup that they did. They have a two-parter for like the best games of the decade. That was really cool. And I actually agreed with most of it anyway. Um, and I discovered them through Podchaser. So podchaser.com, great place. You can write reviews. You can learn about other podcasts. You can learn about creators. Um, we're on there now. So I'll just say it now. Go ahead and find us on Podchaser and please rate and review us because it it means a lot we get a lot more notice than too and the more notice we get um you know the, the more that we're gonna be doing this you know so you have your shout out today yes i would like to shout out the podcast scared to death they are a uh, big podcast um but it's it's nice to listen to them i enjoy their setup it's a husband and wife uh, and they just tell scary stories. And that's it. It's simple, it's good, and it's fun to listen to. Scared to Death. Available where anywhere fine podcasts are hosted on. Alrighty, and if you want to join the squad, head on over to patreon.com slash mission spooky. We have tiers at the one and two dollar levels. One single dollar gets you my undying fidelity. And a shout out on the cast. And then the $2 level gets you access to our booper rails plus the shout out. We are still working on our other levels. But we got the one and the two. Hey, you know what? If it's just $12 a year that we get from a bunch of people, that is a lot of money generated. And what what our intentions are is to basically, I mean, I think we're kind of in agreement here that we, we want to start our own paranormal investigations and we need equipment. 
We're not, I don't want to join somebody else. We, we got our own thing going on here. Yes, that is, that is true. I would like to have paranormal investigations again. That would be fun. This will be one of your last chances to get in on having your ghost story told. We're going to be wrapping that up then um, in about one more week. So this is this you'll have this week and then you're going to have one more week to get us your ghost stories dealing with haunted restaurants that you worked in or if by some chance you happen to work for the King George Inn in Allentown when it was at its heyday, I would love any ghost stories directly from anybody who's worked there. And you can send that to Mission Spooky Podcast, all one word, at gmail.com. Feel free to email us again with questions or comments on any of the other previous episodes. If you're a PA, New Jersey, or Delaware band, and you want us to uh, feature you on our podcast, or if you own your own music, because we just had our band from Sweden, Foghorn Lonesome, so that was pretty cool. Basically, I'm saying you don't have to just be in this area. I would love to have any cool music on. Please contact us through private message on Instagram or Twitter, or you can email us again at that mission spooky podcast, gmail.com. And you can find all of our musical guest songs on our Spotify playlist. Just type Mission Spooky 2020 in the search bar. We're going to continually be adding to that. So Rob's song will be on there now. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Mission Spooky and on our Facebook page. That JC rules with an iron fist. Don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes. Again, it means so much to us to get obviously positive feedback. If you hate us, then, um, you know, just just don't say anything. <laughs> and again, rate and review us on Podchaser. Taking us out once again is Rob Wissenhunt with his song Trainwreck off of his 2019 album, The Variable. Please go show him some love on Spotify where you can hear the entire album. And as always, stay spooky and don't die. But if you do, contact us. Um, if you could send a, uh, YouTube video of your nonverbal communication, that would be, uh, preferred because I'm tired of listening to your voice. <laughs>